This Hangout is on air and live. The notification says, hey guys, thanks for hey watching. Guys. BeBetterGolf.net and ReactionaryGolf.com. The two guys are here, Brendan and Tony. So I'm Brendan Vohr from Be Better Golf, And Tony this is Luzak. Tony Lutzak. Reactionary Golf. So Tony's in Starkville, Mississippi at his golf lab. And I'm in uh, Long Beach, California at my backyard. Uh, Tony, we were talking a little bit about... Um, what you have going on this summer and uh, some of the things as far as like uh, pictures of how good golf or like really great golfers look at impact and regular golfers look at impact. So like a really great golfer like Charles Schwartzel, let's say like uh, when he won the masters, if you looked at a face on video of Charles when, when, uh, when he was um, when he won the Masters, I was going to try to look it up, but that's okay. He's more like this at impact, yep. and everyone else is like, and then and then as we go, it's almost like you could almost tell somebody's handicap because then you know, and then we're talking about a scratch handicap, like me, I'm about there, and then you talk about like a five handicap, and then you're going all the way to like a twenty handicap would be like there, you know. It's like almost like we can tell. So if this right arm, the position of it at impact, but the conundrum of getting better at golf and this specifically is the more I try to at impact be like this, the more I get like that, you know, because I think I'm using the wrong things to try to get it forward. Talk about why it's so hard and then also how we can get into that position better. Well, I think everybody's trying, with, especially with the driver, you're trying to hit the ball as far as possible. Mm -hmm. So there's this, in, just automatically this intent of, I got to put more force behind it in order to get the club moving. So that means I got to work harder. That's muscular work. And then all of a sudden, you know, the body's way out in front, arms are lagging way behind. And now we just have to use the hands at the bottom to kind of catch up. And that's where you see that the high handicap where the hands really are behind because they're actually trying to use their hands, which they have to, in order to get the club head up to the ball. And a lot of times that's they, then they feel, oh, I'm, I'm being hands. They got to use more body. Well, now they put more body into it, less arms. Now, guess what the hands have to do? They even have to work harder in order to get the club head to the ball. So it's almost like this vicious circle of depth of poor contact because they keep applying the wrong technique in order to try and do it, improve impact. So what I would like to see is, and, and we can use that hammer. So there's there's Charles guys just for, for to be able to see on camera. So you see how Tony, I mean, you know this, but just to show everybody, yeah. his hands are there. My hands would be about zipper level. And then like a, a 10 handicap would be about right thigh level and then moving all the way back, all the way back, all the way back. But trying to do this doesn't really work. So I'm kind of recapping what I asked before, but I just wanted to find that picture. So how do we get closer into, because it really seems like when I do get into this position, that's when the ball feels super springy off the face. Yeah. So w w the thing is we're going to feel impact much beyond where actually the club meets the ball, just because of the time it takes for us to recognize impact. So that's one thing I want people to do, want golfers to do, is go ahead and feel that really impact is a foot to three feet out in front of you. So that way you keep moving through the ball. And one of the things to help drive that is, and I, that's the reason why I kind of put um, my watch on my right wrist is because it's a reminder, an external focus to keep that moving. And I've started collecting some data from uh, the watch on, on an app. And we're starting, I'm starting to look at what are the acceleration patterns? What is the velocity? How much rotation we get? And that's one thing I've, I'm kind of seeing is that if I see a lot of rotation happening in the forearms, then that tells me that the club face is open. And I'm really using my hands trying to fix the club head to the ball. I'm not swinging my arms. Now, perception-wise, the club's moving and it feels like, well, I'm, if I'm moving my hands a lot, I must be moving my arms. But it's not really the case. I can move my hands a lot, which moves the head, but I'm not swinging the club head through with my arms. So you're saying and like so when somebody feels like way open here, then they can 
just by going ro rotating, they can fling it this way. But see how this is not I can, is moving the club head forward, but it's not moving the is not moving the right arm forward. But that is more what you want, Tony. Is that right? Um, I think so, but I'm not seeing the video of it, so we got a little technical difficulties. But, oh, okay, okay. Um, but yeah, so I think you know when you had that hammer in your hand before, and if you think about it, how far if we put a post out in front of you, you're going to hammer that nail into that post in front of you, so it's more of a horizontal motion. Where would you put that post? Would it be directly in front of you? Would it be inside left knee, or would it be outside left leg? You know, for a right-handed golfer. So the more forward out in front of us, we can get that motion that keeps those arms accelerated and moving through impact, which now we are controlling the momentum of the swing and not just having momentum take over prior to impact. Because once momentum is just taken over, now we got some triple effect. We got, you know, who knows what the body is doing and what the arms are doing. So now we're going to have inconsistencies of, uh, of contact. So it's kind of like, in a different way, that late hit feeling like you're kind of like real slow waiting for things. And it's, and then you're really feeling the, uh, the, the uh, impact is going to happen real late. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You, you're really kind of, that's compression. You're compressing the ball. You're getting through the shot. That's where it feels like the ball is just taken off and you're getting through the ball and the body does have to help you with that. So the further we get your, arms out in front of you guess what that right hip and right shoulder joint have to do they got to keep moving now to keep that process going so there's the drive of the body to keep that momentum going that we're in control of so this way it just doesn't flop down at impact mm -hmm. and then uh i want to let everybody know can you see me tony by the way actually i can i don't know why okay because um, i i'm on the broadcast I'm, i can see myself but i don't know i don't know why I muted myself or something. Here, let me let me try something. There, maybe maybe I'm back now. Up oh, there, you go. Okay. Now, so yeah, let me switch my camera around. <laughs> okay. Uh, there we go. Okay. So uh, one thing I wanted to let everybody know now too, before we get uh, further is that on June 2nd and 3rd, we have only three spots left at our uh, Williamsburg, Virginia, Golden Horseshoe Golf School. We've had amazing success at our last couple of golf, at all, at all of our golf schools, but particularly the one we just did in Orlando was a, was a combination of great success from the golfers and also a ton of fun. And we're really looking forward to this one in Virginia. It's at one of the best golf courses in America, the Golden Horseshoe. And I really like it just because we are completely alone. Basically, imagine being in thick woods and in the middle of the woods is like a little oasis of a driving range. And that is our little Be Better Golf, Reactionary Golf combo area to get guys better. And um, we have golfers of different abilities coming, but all super dedicated to getting better. So if you want to get better at golf and you want to compress it and you know have this season be really great, We'd love to see you there. It's June 2nd and 3rd. Go to BeBetterGolf.net slash school or email me or Tony. Tony, what are you hoping to get accomplished? And let's talk a little bit about I think he doesn't mind because I talked to him about it. Let's talk a little bit about Spencer's game and who's coming to the school. And what are you hoping to get accomplished for the other golfers there? Well, let's give us a little bit of background on Spencer. So he's, what, plus 2.5, 2.5 handicap? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he wants to get – based on what he's saying he wants to maybe go web.com web you know that would be the first step and then we'll see what happens from there um you know when we look at his swing we both looked at his swing and we kind of talked about some of the movements he makes which is a little bit of a compensation you know the biggest thing for him is is being able to really predict ball flight so with better players can we create the type of shot pattern we want before we hit it so that's one of the things I want to get with him is really cognitively how to start processing the information properly. So it's not so much a mechanical aspect mm -hmm. because the guy's a plus two, he's a player. But the question is, why isn't he scoring the way it is? Because if he goes out and shoots 63 every day or, you know, which is not going to happen, but 63s and 69s where 69 becomes a bad round, well, you can make a living playing golf like that. Yeah. So the question is going to be, you know, where is he losing the shot, you know, um, 
you know, and so that's where I kind of see him, his strategy is going to need to change a little bit. I think his practice routine is going to change a lot. I think his approach isn't as effective as what he's got mapped out right now. Um, so th- those are some of the things that how, how, how so did you see it like in like too much in one certain area or not enough in, a, in, in another area? Yeah, so I, I kind of think he needs to spend more time with the, on the driver. Yeah, because I mean, just looking at the numbers um, alone, and I, I know some guys, some tour players on all different tours, including the, the best tour that's Spencer there. Um, and he says he carries it about 267, which is is good, but just you're not going to like turn um, par 72 courses into par 68 courses like that, you know? Uh, so, so driving to me is probably the biggest factor. If we can give them another 10 more yards of carry distance. Um, that's, and that's where I kind of started with my analysis, talking about him loading up a little bit better. So that way he doesn't have to work backwards as much in order to hit the ball. So that, that's the, to me, the biggest thing is once we get the driver working, um, you know, and that's where we had that opportunity to talk with Richie Hunt over at the Orlando schools, just how important it is to get off the tee to set up the rest of the game. So to me, yeah. if we can't hit the driver well, we're not going to be able to play great golf. And so that that really kind of shifted my focus. doesn't diminish the short game. We need that. We need putting. We need to be able to putt great from that 3 to 15 foot range. So we're going to take a look at that with Spencer. But we really got to be able to get off the tee. Yeah, and that was the one thing that I saw in the swing. And as I'm trying to learn to be a golf instructor in the future and, and analyze swings and stuff, so I saw Spencer, as he's making his forward swing with the hands, the head is going backwards, which some good players do. But yeah. you're, saying, you're saying with that, you're saying it's not so much get, get that from going backwards, but it's more if, if he loads in the backswing this, you know, into the backswing this way, then he can get things working more <laughs> together that way? Or? Yeah, so what ends up happening is he kind of stays a little bit more kind of centered. And because he does have a little bit stronger grip, which we're probably we're not going to change, but he's got to back up in order to get the ball up in the air. Well, if we kind of shift him to the right a little bit, that creates a little bit more of a kind of a, a, a lateral tilt. Then he can kind of stay a little bit more level and work a little bit more forward through the ball, which will then give him the trajectory needs, but now give him a little bit more club head speed. Okay. Did your uh, your AirPod went out? Yeah. Can you still oh, hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. It's, it's okay. Okay, so yeah. the one now now moving from uh, Spencer to me. One of the things I'm going to be doing, guys, is you, you guys have heard on my channel that app Swing Profile. Well, I've been talking to the inventors of Swing Profile, or the inventor of Swing Pro- Profile, really nice guy from New Zealand named Zeke, and uh, they say it differently there, but I'll call him Zeke. <laughs> and um, so, I was talking to, to to them about that because I really think it's a great tool to to get better and. I want to uh, highlight it on Be Better Golf, and eventually I want to go down to, to New Zealand, but they're like a really small company. So what I want to do between – Tony, I, I'll see you in what – is, what is today? The, the 20th, 4, uh, 420. So I'll see you in a month and 10 days about. Yep. And so, so let's talk a little bit. The one thing that I, I am a little – because I'm – aesthetically, it's looking much better. The contact feels much better. The swing speed is is a lot better, but the one thing that I was just at the golf store and then I was thinking about the numbers that we were getting during filming um, reactionary golf masterclass, this thing that we have coming out soon, and I just I'm not super happy about the ball speed that I'm getting as far as even though the swing speed's fa- getting faster, my ball speed is like it's still like just under 160, and I would like to be. Really, I would like to be at about 170. So, um, yeah, if we take a look at your swing on video so, and this, yeah, so, of- so for just to, to set this up, so for swing profile, I would like to use that app to change one. I would like to pick out one thing, and by the time I'm, I see you on June 1st, it, that will be fixed using using the swing profile app to be able to hit a shot, look back, see if I fix it because I want to really focus on one thing. So, where do you think? in my swing would be costing me ball speed, even though I'm getting like pretty good actual, like 117 club head speed. 
right. when I swing well, super hard. Yeah. I want to see is let's fix this backswing once and for all. Okay. And the first part of it or the the, part, the, all the way to the top? The takeaway and then the top position. Once we get those two really ironed out, because we've been kind of, you know, kind of modifying it one way a little bit more, then it's like, okay, that's good. But now that led into another habit you got into. So we got to fix that. So we kind of keep going back and forth. So if we can really get the takeaway down and get the top of the position down, uh, correct. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is face on, but you can see here the, the one of the, where this would be. Um, so just watch how the, see, it kind of starts. They're not going away at the same rates. Are they Tony? Is that what that we mean? Like where the club head is going away Correct. pretty fast, yes. but see, we were yeah, talking about I would, the. I want to see more of an arm swing right there. I feel like that set happens a little bit later. Um, and then you can still see at the top, the transition still just a little bit loose. And then your speed is just because you, your arm speed and your club speed, they're just, and your body's just not quite synced up enough. And so that's where you're losing that, that extra compression. So you that's think that the takeaway, you think the takeaway being a little disconnected and loose is making my transition the same way? Yes. Yeah, so if you think really? about it, is is if, if all of a sudden that speed of those of the club and the hands are different and that club's in a this different back position. Swing here. Yeah. So if we could kind of what I call that is just kind of tightening it up. And what I see is that the pressure in your right hand kind of just disappears a little bit. At, uh, the, top. at the top, yeah. Okay, yeah, so, so I'm here. The takeaway gets a little bit outside. And then at the top, it's just a little bit soft. So that right wrist just kind of doesn't quite have the control. And then you're trying to kind of like capture everything on the way down. So where, where how does that connect to loss of ball speed, do you think? Well, where it's, it's not it's getting energy. translated into, into the ball. Yeah, so, so now when the club kind of drops or, or a little bit, and then it kind of gets a little bit laid off. Now, what do you have to do? You have to just realign everything with your hands because you, you're being a good golfer you know how to to adapt your hands and the club head to get to the ball but that takes energy so you're not putting it in the arm speed you're putting it in the club head manipulation to get it. yes exactly so I'm, I'm a little stuck behind myself and i'm using this rotation to get it forward right and and, and some people believe that that's more club head speed and i and i would not disagree potentially but now that's the face doing this well what happens to consistency to me, that just is inconsistent unless you're hitting a bazillion balls. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's tour players don't have time for that. And so that's the reason why they can get away with that. Kind of like a BJ Singh, a Freddie Couples. You've seen some of those guys where they're actually the right hand like comes off type thing. Um, but that's what that is. So if we can build up better arm, better control at the top, you know, and that's where I want you to really feel things in the, the thumb, forefinger, middle finger, hear that claw at the top and feel like there's some some pressure in that that those three fingers at the top. So this way, when you get up to the top, it's nice and strong. And then now your force is not on adjusting the club head to the ball is now you can just deliver that force through the ball. OK, so so to be, be real clear about about what we would like to see by the time we get together and what I should be working on with this. The, the auto replay function of swing profile is really a, a very connected takeaway that gets to a very strong, solid spot at the top. We talked a lot before about Justin Thomas's swing. So it's, it's yeah. kind of that look, right? Correct. Correct. So your hands really shouldn't set to your, till they get past the right leg. So that should be a process of setting as you take the club back where I think what has just happened, and it's, it's, it's natural because why? You, you're trying to adapt to things and adapt to things, you know, we're, we're a couple thousand miles away. And so as you learn things, that just became a little bit too soon. So I want that to kind of slow, slow down a little bit. So this way it sets when the shaft gets parallel to the ground and it's parallel to your alignment, that's where the wrist should be setting, is back there not in front of so you right if, now. if there's if there's a spot on video that you want to see different what would it where would it be or if even if there's a small little loop of area you know so yeah, like so, I'm, uh, I'm trying to say i'm trying to say like okay if i'm using this app where what what am i looking for 
when when I have, when I've hit a shot and I look back and I see my replay, what am I looking for to be different? So or what am sure I looking for? The camera in the right position because that's critical too. Because if the camera is off a little bit, then that's going to give our perspective off. So and that's something we always have to watch out for. So I want the camera roughly about waist high on a tripod and in line with your hands. Mm -hmm. Okay, so down the line. So when you get to that shaft parallel to the ground and your, your hands will be outside your right leg, and that it's that should be parallel to your target line. Face will be slightly toed down, that's a square face, and that's where you're feeling that wrist set out there beyond, beyond your right leg. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, then just Thomas' position at the top, I think, is just a, your great model to make that happen. Okay, so, so of all the different things, so... So I think what I'm hearing as far as if I want to find a spot to really get solid is to take it through. And when I'm like basically at the point of see, so right there is when I'm like the most uh, have I would have the most angle. See how it's like overswung there a little bit. Well, unfortunately, we're running into our, our technical dif oh, that's okay. difficulties again. That's OK. So so what I. I just want to think at the very top is kind of of a, re a representation of what's happened before it. So that would be the the spot that I want to nail the best. Do you think and have more angle, less overswing? Correct. At the very Correct. top. At the very top. And again, what we why why I wanted it across the line before was just trying to get away from making sure that club wasn't getting laid off at the top because that mm -hmm. laid off position then led into to other things. So now that you're starting to get better with that, now it's time to let's get a little bit more control. We're seeing it disappear, but now we can see, okay, let's just do it right. We don't have to over adapt things anymore. Mm -hmm. How do you and get I'm, it out of your body? Cause I know I can feel in myself that I feel that that little bit of uh, extra wrist hinge and that little yeah. bit of overswing at the top, it feels like that gives me even more backswing length to be able to hold the angle and and give it more time to really let it out and sling it. And uh, how do I change my idea of what's going to be fast and still and feel that, OK, I am fully set at the top, even though I haven't folded my wrist just that little bit extra. So you're going to feel that's where we're really going to feel a difference through impact. And that's where we should see the difference in ball speed. It actually may feel slower mm -hmm. parts of it will feel slower because why you're not going to be so handsy down at the bottom um because now and what i want to do is let's see if i can show this to everybody i got your swing here okay cool um so it's kind of this that hand action right there you can really see your body kind of goes backwards a touch a little little rory-esque like and that extra hand motion, we want to reduce some of that. And so that's going to force more of your arms and your body to go through impact. So it's going to feel, it may feel slower because of what you've been accustomed to, but actually it'll be more compression. Your body's going to feel different. You're going to feel like you're facing the target a lot sooner. Your upper body's going to be rotating better and lower body be rotating better. So you the the club head it may be counterintuitive. It's almost like a punch shot type feeling, where sometimes people have hit punch punch shots and they're going, "Geez, I put like nothing, no backswing length into it, but look how far the ball went." That's a pure compression that we're talking about. So I know that like the feels of feels can be very fleeting, and like sometimes mm -hmm. you feel it one way, and there's a certain result and what happens, and you feel it another way is a totally different one. How can we put what I'm trying to do as far as wider at the top more more set and less overswung at the top and more solid how can we put that into like an external focus as far as would there be a noodle setup or would there be a certain like where i'm trying to hit under certain things or like how could i put that into because the more i'm reading about through the stuff you pointed out to me and the stuff i've found on my own is to really make uh, make changes happen you got to you got to get out of the internal feel so much like don't do this too much or that too much and more like focus on either what the club is doing or, or what you're swinging around. 
So this is a drill I've used a lot. And I think I wouldn't say a lot because it's something that I think only better players would benefit from is I would want you to take like a five iron or six iron, go with a really strong pollet, what I call my Paul Azinger drill, a very strong grip. Okay. So both the right, you know, trail hand and lead hand get strong. Exactly. And let's hit some shots. And let's see how low we can drive that ball. You know, so from the external focus, you're going to probably feel like maybe like the zipper or your buttons on your shirt can face, will be facing through through impact. You're going to kind of see this opening up a lot more. And you're mm-hmm. going to feel more, I hate to use the word more connected, but it's muscle activation, more of the pecs being engaged. And you're just going to feel more underhand and forward than what you what you're probably currently feeling right now. So, so it's real strong, strong, real strong grip punch shots without hooking it. That's the mm-hmm. key. You can't hook the ball. If you hook it, then what's happening to that club face? We're we're rotating it. So we want to take that rotation away. It was interesting during the Masters um, of the like the two hours that I saw all week um, because of school they had a, a slow motion of Gary player back in the day. And I, I snapped a picture of this. And I haven't posted it yet, but Gary player, like his hands were uh, waist high after impact zero shaft rotation. Yeah. So that's the sort of feeling I want you to get to and using that, the, the zinger, you know, strong grip knuckles to the sky type of feeling to help get that there without hooking the ball is what I'd want you to do. Now, that would be kind of tough with the driver, but it still may, it may not be a bad thing at least to try out a few, but I would spend more time with the irons, making sure we get the bathroom dial down with the position. And then through impact, that's what I want to see in June is we're going to work on that motion uh, through impact. Okay. But for as far as like something to, for me to lock, lock in on to when I'm doing the swing review, what do you think? Because – me me trying to to fix something through impact is like that's the result, reason why, of, the result of other things happening you know it's not really something right. I, I can fix on my own right not, that's I can fix it on my own, but it's not something that, like i work on impact is is like happens so fast it's not like let me get my my impact better it's like right that's the reason i want you to fix the backswing first now we're making the assumption that the backswing is done mm-hmm. okay and that's the sort of thing you just got to check. But then having the, the, and again, the external focus. So for me, my watches would be, would be, I want the face of the watch pointed to the ground. That would be my external focus with that. Exactly. Where, where? like right, right. Just past impact, past, past impact, waist high, past impact. So that's the reason why it's more of that punch out. It's a drill. Mm-hmm. So use ball flight. And, and uh, you know, find your external focus. So for me, because, again, I can feel it, I want that watch like this through, you know, halfway through my finish. That's because interesting. I'm making an abbreviated swing. So you're saying that when, when you see this through impact, you see this uh, kind of slung over part like yep. this. Yep. That is kind of a sign that I was late before and I was using that, that wrist flip to get it through impact or else I would have topped it. Exactly. Or okay. Or something else. I'm going to yeah. see if I can put this up for everybody. So this is what I, I, I captured. Let's see if anybody can see that. So I don't know if you can see that very well. I'll, I'll, no, we I'll see message it. No, we just to you. Yeah, just okay. keep talking because it'll pop up on your. Okay. So this is the sort of thing that if you look at that position and look at his arms and look at the club face, I mean, there's no rotation at all. You know, and I don't know what type of shot and everything, but it just kind of struck me saying when we, we really don't need all this space rotation in the golf swing. It's been taught that way, toe up to toe up. But is that really the most effective way to deliver the club to the ball? And I would I would say no, it's not. Now, some people need it. I think there's it's not a bad thing. Like I said, you can get additional more club head speed because you have the toe of the club flipping over. So yeah, the toe is moving faster than the heel, but what happens if that ball positions off? What happens if the lie is not perfect? You know, we're not on a flat ground. Now what happens to your ball flight? Now it starts going all over the place. 
So that's yeah, the reason why guys like Zinger was, you know, that's why I got from Zinger was he was so good with that because he didn't have, he couldn't have face rotation with that strong grip. Yeah. And right now leading in the PGA tour is Zach Johnson, who has a very strong grip and works with uh, Mike Bender, who we were just yeah. at his place. And Mike was uh, somewhat unavailable for our school because he, Zach Johnson was in town and Mike and Zach were working together so much. Yep. But one of the things that somebody said to me that I was saying like, yeah, Mike Bender also believes in this uh, arms first feeling from the top. And somebody said to me, well, Zach Johnson's his student. He, he doesn't go arms first from the top. He's all body <laughs> rotation. And I said, what, what, what's your thing? What's your thought about that? Cause somebody will just, see Zach swing and think, oh, all he's doing is just, because he's such a strong grip, he's just rotating. But uh, yeah. I know for sure that him and Mike Bender have worked on that arms first, arms first to, they talk about the checkpoint being something you and I have talked about, talked about the checkpoint when the knees get parallel, the arms should already be down to like belt level rather than right. like almost everybody's like the arms are like up here when their knees get spun parallel. Let me see if I can show you guys real quick. So this is down the line and these are my knees here. And if I go see my knees are parallel here, my arms are still all the way up here. But Zach, when his knees are parallel, his arms are already about there. There, yeah. And then he's got a lot more body to use through the ball. So talk, talk a little bit about Zach's swing and how watching someone swing, you would think he's doing it one way, but it could be the opposite. Well, I think because people are expecting, uh, you know, they're, they're thinking that the body drives the swing. So that's one thing. And they see, if you see through his finish, you know, he finishes more around because that's the upper body really rotating because that is the lack of the stronger grip. So then they, that, cause that's the part they see. They really don't, unless the camera just slows everything down, they're not going to see that very well, how fast it works. So, the arm acceleration is just really the smoothness that Zach has that all tour players have is great arm acceleration that keeps the arms and the, the body all in sync. So it's one of those things that we were talking about in class is that the better players actually have a little bit less muscle activation in order to create coordination where the, the poor athletes, they're trying to, you know, hit positions and different things like that. So it's very kind of rugged and, and jaggedy. So they're, they're trying to get everything working. But the good players are just so smooth. So that arm acceleration really kind of almost disappears. And it actually, from a feel standpoint, it, it does disappear because why? It's so well developed. They don't feel it because they just do it. But so then that, that ends up getting misinterpreted or misapplied in golf instruction. And that's what the announcers will say. And even tour players will say that. Well, I feel my hips through impact. Well, yeah, you do, because that's actually where you do most of the work is through impact. But then people think that, you know, because so much of the X factor junk and everything else out there that, hey, I got to get those things moving first. But then that leaves the arms lagging behind and then that leaves catch up and the flip at the bottom. Yeah, one thing I was thinking about recently, Tony, if, if you can see this, was that if, if this is the, the whole golf swing here, right, and how much okay. power there is available in the golf swing, okay. right, and we say that from research and other things, we, we, see, we see that, let's say, this first 85% of this, of, available, of, of say, 100% speed, this first 85% is the arms, right, that is get, giving right. us so much of this power. And yeah. then the, the last 15% is uh, legs, body, hips, right. torso yeah. rotation. Uh, well, I don't know. The but torso whatever. rotation would be part of the arm swing. Yeah, it's part of the arms. Yeah, so, th so basically yeah. like it, this triangle part here is this. So what I was thinking was one of the reasons it's so bad sometimes to take advice from tour players or whatever else is they've got this first 85% down pat. Like they've Correct. got that down really good. So when they're looking to hit the ball a little bit, a, a little further, they're not really going to get that arm swing that much better to be able to get five more yards out of it. I mean, they've done it so well. It's really going to be up into this area, you know. So when a tour player, you know, starts, let, let's say they have a swing 
um, a swing key that's working for them and they're hitting the ball five yards further carry or something, they've more than likely they've gotten to where they are by having a great arm swing and having all this working really well. So now they're really starting to have to use their keys up in here to, to get good, to get not to get good, but to get a little bit more. But then I think also as well, that when they start really focusing in on here too much, I think that's when we see guys fall off a little yeah. bit. Does yeah, exactly. this make sense to you? you, think you think yeah, I'm now, some- uh, yeah, I think, and I would add one other thing. Let's say the intensity of the 85%, let's give that a number. Let's give that 8.5. Hmm. Okay. Okay. And now they want that other, and so that means point one point five would be from the, we'll say lower body. Now they want to increase that intensity a little bit more. So they're going to increase it by one. So it's not that the arms are going to get decreased and they're going to put more force in the body. Everything ends up increasing faster. So it's 0.5 up top and 0.5 at the bottom. So the proportion of doing it up here. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where, that's where it falls into maybe it feels like a 90, 10, which is what you would just, what what you just got done saying. I just threw some numbers to it. So the faster the arms move, what does the body have to do in order to stay up with it? Go faster. Mm -hmm. So it's more of an intensity and, you know, 8.5, you could relate that to 85% intensity. And then I go 95% intensity with my arms. Now I got to go ahead and get my body to go that extra little bit too. So um, that's the whole thing is it's the speed of the arms and the speed of the body. I can't have one be too much far off than the other one. And then when we have perception, I mean, that throws everything really out of the whack because what people perceive is so much based on their, their motor patterns. Okay. So wrapping up here, Tony, just because I'm, I'm making my list for um, basically goals before June to see. Okay. So, whatever. Okay, so with, with swing profile, I think the thing that I wanna, that I wanna improve the most as far as when watching my swing on the instant replay, which I think okay. is a, a great way to get better, is, is at the, at the very top of my swing, when my swing is most fully set, so right now it's about like, you know, say, say yeah. that. When yeah. my swing is most fully set, it should, be, it should be parallel to the target line, and there should be maybe even a little bit more than 90 degrees between le- left arm and shaft. You think that's right, Tony? I would say with the irons, yes. I, I would shoot that as a good goal. And I would say driver for you, I would, I would want just right at parallel. Or 90, you know, not roughly. Right at 90. 90, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. So at the, at, the, at the top, and when it is most, I, say, I guess, cocked, for, for, the, for lack of a better word, it should be parallel to the target and yeah. And depending on, on how irons. long, yeah, it may not appear with your irons should look a little bit laid off, but it's not laid off. So if you think about it, you know, if, if we take and everything's parallel at the top, you can see the pencil disappears. If I make it a little bit shorter, you know, relative to the camera. So right now yeah. the, the pencil disappears. I make it a little bit shorter. Where is the pencil pointing? It's pointing left, but it's really not pointed left. It's just left relative to this time. Because this would be parallel. Because I made okay. a longer backswing, you mean? Because you made a shorter backswing. So if I go from here, okay, so that's there. Okay, so if I'm, then, taking back, uh, if I'm taking a backswing and I actually have a cl- And going here, here, here. So th- if I stop there, it actually looks like it's pointed left, but it's not because if I fully took it, that would be exactly right. There you go. Perfect. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So as far as if I get the camera set up in exactly the way you want it, as far as hands high and also level with my hands at setup, right? Or right. belt high, level with my hands at setup. Should I be able to see the shaft at the top? Yeah, no, like it, it should be good. It should maybe right about there. You'll see a little bit there. 
it should be at that like zero point almost where it's it's totally there instead of so not there not there or there but where i i see almost nothing correct exactly and that's where we got to kind of just really map out based on a person's hot camera height and your individual height we we really got to map those be careful with those because people that's where people end up well look at this position at the top well like where, where's the camera you know i'm starting Great. to get more into that so because your dual cameras now we can get some depth sensing in there and we can say okay well that's parallax because i got two different perspectives i'm gonna see two different angles of the same object so which one's actually correct that's the reason why camera position is really, really critical to establish what your reference point is. Yeah, and I don't think they've really caught up yet, but things like SkyPro or the other things that you can put on, on the club to know exactly where in time. Like, I know that there's some things available now that are supposed to tie in watching a video with 3D, like where in space the club was, but um, I think that's going to be really important in the future too because a lot of times like people will... And that's something I'm trying to get better at as we're doing the schools. Like sometimes like you'll hear so much about what their body is doing, but like you, you're not really ever talking about the club and that's right. really where, what you have to focus on. And that, right, that's so, where I'm really, really excited real quick. We got a tr swing trainer system coming in from the motion monitor company or motion monitor software. Uh, I think it's in sport. Uh, that's what it's going to be able to do. So we'll be able to actually position cameras at different angles, but then motion capture with our Vicon camera system. And we'll be able to map all that out. And this way we can really focus in on what is a good position and what isn't a good position based on 2D versus 3D. Um, you know, we've got a $75,000 camera system that will be able to give us everything we want it to have. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that content. That, that's going to be on Tony's channel this summer. So be yeah. sure to be subscribed. All right, so that's great for swing profile. Then as far as new drills, we're going to do the zinger drill where yep. – uh, tell me that again as I'm writing it down. Okay, so we're going to go with the strong grip, get, get like a good three-knuckle grip with the top lead hand and right hand's a little bit underneath it. And then, again, it's, it's not a full backswing. Make it like a two-thirds backswing and then a, like a two-thirds finish, but really get the feeling that we're not going to hook the ball that we're going to hit these bullets, these just knockdown punch out bullets and a lot of compression to it. Ball's probably going to go further than what, you know, what the regular full swing will be because we're actually getting some shaft lean in that, that we're G lofting the club, but that's what we want to develop that habit, that feel. Great. Okay. Uh, I didn't plug this enough during this thing, but uh, there is coming up. If you guys watch to this point, then you definitely have to come because at in, uh, in Virginia, there's only three spots left, and probably by the time this school goes out, because there's some fence centers, there will probably only be two spots left. There's only three spots left, and there's only going to be eight total. So it's a very uh, uh, intense and like uh, lots of one-on-one -on -one time kind of school. At Golden Horseshoe, really amazing course oh, in awesome. Williamsburg, Virginia. And uh, tell, uh, t tell us, Tony, a little bit about uh, – like is – is a golf school, this golf school is like $949. Is, is that worth it, do you think, for somebody? Or should, you know, could, should they just like get a new set of golf clubs? Or, I, don't, I don't know what they, you know. Do you think well, that's an investment? It's, it's, it's too cheap. That? First of all, it's yeah. too cheap. <laughs> but, it, you know, when we take a look at all the information that we have, and how we've got this really nailed down, and the, the systems we're bringing in with foresight and the, and the cameras, and the methodology behind all this and the continuing education we'll do after the school, uh, it's, it's a no-brainer because it's, it's a matter of developing your swing and finding your swing. So this way you are very, very organized when you leave. That's the good thing about it is it's not so much, okay, here's something brand new today on Saturday and you got to do something different on Sunday. No, this is how the golf club is designed. Basically, I've re reversed engineered how the club is designed and how we're designed to produce a straight ball flight. And then how do we maximize that from a motor control perspective, not from a kinematic perspective? And so when we put all that together, that information's there, and then we take have that individual personalize it. And then that way they can really fine tune and understand what they have to do to create their best shots. And to see the results, um, it, it's, it's awesome. I mean, we put a lot of work into it, but that's why it's so good because the guys there just, they, they're worn out. 
So, yeah, I was laughing because I saw the itinerary of another golf school that's um, four times as much. But um, <laughs> they're, they're, the end of their day is 2.30. What? Uh, as far as that's like in, a half day. Well, yeah, well, they start at 8 uh, about the time we start. The, the end of their instruction day is 2.30. Then they can go out on the course. And the end of their day, like, like you got to go, is 4.30. And I remember last year in June, we were there till 8.15. And uh, we were, you were still doing instruction on the range, and and yeah. I, I I was out on the course with the guys. It, I mean, and the other thing that can't be understated is is the is the fun factor, and that's been the amazing joy for me, just because I, I love doing golf and stuff. And it is um, how much fun it is for 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 me, and then I think for you, and I know for, for sure for the for the guys because of the feedback I get. So. It's, oh yeah, uh, I mean, I love it. I mean, after the two day school, yeah, I'm exhausted, but that's because we've put in so much good work, and to see the success that these guys have in such a short period of time only further validates what I already know works. So, um, you know, I, I'm if we can get somebody to hit the ball straight 400 yards and win world long drive championship, we we know the technique works. Besides, yeah. just besides all the science behind it, it's been already been proven. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Um, you guys know all the information. Uh, email Tony uh, at... Uh, Tony at reactionarygolf.com. Tony at reactionarygolf.com. Email me, contactbebettergolf at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Bye. See you guys.